she said she's ready to offer anything. She will make a deal. And I said, what deal? She said she will offer sex. I said, I'm not interested. I looked at it. I told her, I said, no, 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 no. I don't do that. I, I don't do that. And I don't want, please. I departed her and I said, don't worry. All will be well. Hello, guys out there. My name is Damilar Konla, and you're welcome to Legit TV. Today with me here in the studio is Mr. Tene John, a now former lecturer at the Nigeria Institute of Journalism, who was alleged to have sexually harassed one of his students in the institution. We've heard quite a number of uh, reports on this allegations. We've heard the ladies angry, and of course, we have the school stand point on this issue. He has been dismissed from the service. The services he was rendering uh, to the school, which spanned over a decade, if I get my facts correctly. And of course, he's no longer a lecturer at the institution. But we have him here in the studio today to talk to us about these allegations and how maybe he's had a um, series of altercations with this lady, or maybe they were friends, or they were never friends. Or maybe just something went wrong. Mr. Tene, we've had so many angles to this report. We've had a lot of people say stuff. Even the school has come out clean to say they set up a panel to investigate this matter. But sadly, uh, you had to be relieved of your duties as a lecturer in the institution. Tell us, how did you feel when you first got that? But that is, how, how did you feel? I felt bad. After 13 years of service, I felt bad. Justice was not done at all. I felt bad. Because if the panel said they did not find me guilty, why didn't they relieve me of my job? What I expected them to do was place me on suspension, if at all, and continue with further investigation. That was what I was expecting. Thank you. Okay, so um, now that this has happened, could you tell us what actually happened? How did this whole thing start? On the 13th of December, I came into school. I met the lady beside my office at the inquiry office, Miss Cynthia, and the other woman at the next office, Mrs. Uh, Maureen Umore. And they both were uh, talking. So. At that point, I came in, we greeted, and we exchanged pleasantries, and uh, they, they said, okay, I'm fine. Now, why did I even come to school? That Am I that strong enough to come and take class? And I said, since I'm around camp area, and that's why I said, let me just come in and take the class. And I went to the class to tell my student that I'm around, I want to lay my head a little bit so that I'll be refreshed for, for class. the class. And while I was coming up from the lecture area, I saw Miss Angela, and I told her, ah, Madam, you are in school today. Ah, welcome. And I said, follow me to the office. Because the reason why I said she should follow me was that her colleagues, other colleagues, have done what um, I told her to come and do, which is the transfer of attendance. If you look at the, at, at, at the attendance, you discover that it's rough. The attendance sheet is rough. And because some people were not giving matric number at that time, they signed below the normal uh, line. So I agreed with the governor of the class and the whole class, not just one class, the two classes, um, and the one A and then the one B, that we should change the attendance. And the governors agreed that they have a new attendance sheet that has a full matric number of all the students, both new and the existing one that, that have been on campus earlier. And I said, okay, if that be the case, fine. Let me have the copy of the attendance, which they give, give, uh, gave to me. And I told them that everybody should come and be signing with their own hands so that there won't be any argument that is on me that signed. And if you ask the student, they will tell you they did. Even the HOD must come, the new HOD must come, Mr. Os Michael Suji, could testify to this because he saw them at the entrance of my office and said, what are they doing? And he said they are trying to transfer the attendance to a new sheet. And he said, okay, they should continue. But while she was in my office and she was signing, she came just two times. The first class she didn't come, I, I ruled it in her presence. She signed the second day, which was the same thing here. And number is the last number because her, mat um, her matric is not the same with the present student. She was expelled from school. She was given expulsion, and she had to come back after one year. 
And for that reason, her matric number does not exist or correlate with the existing one. Okay. And so she signed the first day. She didn't come the third and the fourth day. I ruled it in her presence. She, she signed the fifth week. The sixth week, she didn't come. I ruled it off the seventh week, the eighth week, the ninth week. The, the tenth week was the thirteenth week she came in. And I told her that she would sign that in class when it is time for lecture. And while she was in the office, I asked her, Shem came in, a, a student of ND2, Shem Ulua Shem Mohammed, came into the office. Because the door was unlocked. She came into the office and sat down. Because and every Friday, she brings her things because she go, goes back to Maui because of traffic. She stays around a gig area or thereabout. So she brings her, her things to my office. My office is a kind of open place where students come in and out. They charge their phone. They bring their uh, belongings if they have, and they drop it. So at that point, why she was signing the attendance, I now asked her that what was the reason why she has not been coming to school. In that, if you look at it, the attendance is going to affect you. And knowing fully well that you have issues already with school, it doesn't speak well of you before. And and that was just it. And she said she has gotten a job. All of this on the thirteenth of December. On the thirteenth of December, sir. And she said she has gotten a job. And I said, if you have gotten a job, you cannot do that together with a full-time program. That you cannot run the two concurrently. That it is not possible for you to do that. And knowing fully well that NIJ frown at attendance. And that is why I brought the student's handbook, which I go about with. They know me with this. The student will testify. And if you look at section 2.3 of, uh, of the student manual, it says that attendance in class is an end of semester examination. For students to, uh, to qualify to sit for that examination, a one, attain a minimum attendance of 70%. And if you look at our attendance now, you would yes, discover she that she just three, seven. which is 30% of her attendance. So while she was there, I gave her an advice that me, the student affairs, the dean of student affairs, uh, officer, Mrs. Patricia Kaleson, yes, which we normally call Mama Kale, Mama Kale, that meet her and she will help you. And, and I said, ah, is this still possible to change from full-time to part-time? Okay. I said, hold on. All this while, Shane was in my office. I quickly stepped out, went to the other office of inquiry, which is uh, which doubles as the bookshop too, and I asked Cynthia, at this point, is it possible for somebody to change from full-time to part-time? Because she knows more about the school information, and that's why I went to ask her. He said it's possible that, well, Mama Kale will tell us to write letter. And I said, OK. I came back to the office, and I told her that she said it's possible, but you need to write a letter. That you need to see Mama Kale, and you need to write a letter. And she said, OK, no problem. But she will not be able to do that. I said, next week, the following week, was our matric week, that you can come on the day of matric, which is a lecture-free day, and do everything, take, you know, excuse from the office, and do everything you want to do that day, and go back to the office, that since there's no lecture, you know, they will attend to you, and you will do that. And he said, ah, um, she, she even stays on the island, that she has, she has left her uh, accommodation in Ogba. But uh, at that point, she said she would like me to assist her to, for the um, a quick um, change of um, the part, uh, full-time program part -time. to part-time program. And I said, I, I, I'm not the one. The only thing you can do is, I'll help you see Mama Kale. Since you said you will not be available, I'll see her on your behalf. And whatever she says, I'll get. Have you been doing this with other students? Is it like a normal practice? Yes, or I will. Yeah. In fact, if you ask Mama Kale, she will tell you. Uh, one, once in a while, you, at times, if students have issues like that, they come. Uh, is it possible that I, I will meet Mama Kale and tell her that we have students that want to cross over because of um, work, because of this? And she will give advice on that, and I'll tell the person. In that case, she said she's ready to offer anything. That, she, uh, that she, she will make a deal. And I said, what deal? She said she will offer sex. I said, I'm not interested. She said she, she will offer sex. So she was the one who she was offering She was the one that was offering it, that if 
that if that could be possible, that she would make that deal. And, and I looked at it, I told her, I said, no, 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 I don't do that. I, I don't do that, and I don't want. Please. And I passed her, and I said, don't worry, all will be well. Let's see Mama Kale. And she said, am I not going to class? I called her Olodo. I said, why? Because you, you, you don't come to school regularly. You don't know. My class used to be 8 o'clock to 10. And they now later change it from 8 to 9, so as to accommodate the student to come early. And, and I said, since you have not been regular in school, you don't know that the class is now 9, nine. o'clock. She laughed and said, OK, sir, we'll see in class. And she left. So that was what that happened? That was what that happened. So she offered sex? She offered sex. She said no. I said no. I turned it down. Have you had ladies come around in that guise before that? Have they offered sex before and then no. maybe something has happened? No. Whether on record, off record? No. No. Nothing of such. Nothing of such. Nothing of such. Because in, um, be before that issue, she had had issues with the school authority, with the school management over over um, indecent dressing and right. um, insubordination to the HOD and a senior of, um, lecturer of the, of the institute. Okay, before, before then, did you have any close um, relationship with this lady? Maybe you guys, maybe you had seen traces of the lady coming at you, maybe seductively and not. Did you see anything like that before that, before, before just coming out of the blue to offer sex? No, no, because one thing that, that I know is that I relate with all my students. I relate with all of them, and I try as much as possible to carry them along, regardless of who you are, because I try to encourage and motivate people to, to do well. And at that point, when she offered me sex and I turned it down, I told her I wasn't interested. And she, she left. But she was gone. She was not there at that time. She so they were just both of you? Uh, both of us. And it was later uh, that the student affairs officer called me and said, the student alleged me of sexual harassment in my office. I said, a student. I said, who? He now mentioned her name. I said, nothing of such. I said, nothing of such. If that could happen, the lady next to my office was yeah, there. Right. My office is not far to the security post. Students were around. The um, office assistant to the provost, Mr. Obed, was around. The security attached to the office of the provost was also there, upstairs. Which you could see the gardener of the school, Mr. Rafe, was there. Uh, my office is not far to the cafeteria. The two women, Mama, we popularly known as Mama, and um, and um, this other fair lady, were at the cafeteria. Both of them were there. They were cooking. So if, you have, if there's anything of such, and she has raised a lamp, everybody will come out, and they will see that. And a few minutes when she left, I sent her a message on WhatsApp. The same message I've confirmed, because she gave me a number that same day. I, I sent her a message. If you look at the message, this is December 13th. So that was the first time you were taking a number on a WhatsApp. Number on WhatsApp. A, yes, and on the first time you were chatting, chatting with her, very first time. Very first time in our office. Not like you guys had we don't prior have conversation. We don't have, we've not chatted before. So she gave me that day. And I said, okay, to, to store the number, I sent the message I confirmed from Cynthia to her. I have asked the first step. It's possible. It's possible. Waiting for Mama Kale. Eh? Is that okay? He said, thank you, sir. It's okay. He says, thank you, sir. It's okay. And when I finished the class, later I went to class. She came to class that same day. That she said, in fact, a few minutes that she said, I sexually harassed her. If somebody has sexually harassed you, what I expected you to do while you came to class is raise alarm, shout, you know, say all manner of things in the presence of everybody. She was in class. She came and she brought, she, has, she took excuse and said, she said, uh, the her roommate was there. So I excused the class, went to her roommate, I said, excuse me, I will see you after the class. So I told her to hang around. And she came into the class, she sat down and signed the attendance. The class could testify to this. She signed the attendance, 
And at that point, when I finished the class, I stepped out. When I stepped out, I saw Mama Kale. And I told Mama Kale at that point that, Mama, I've been, thank God I saw you. And she said uh, she wants to address the two classes. I said, you are free. So at that point, I now asked her that, Ma, is it possible to transfer it's from full-time from to part-time? He said, ah, it's possible. Who is the person? I said, it's Angela. I said, tell her to write a letter. But was I, this before Angela alleged that you sexually harassed her? Because you said Mama Kali had called you to tell you somebody, one of the students said you sexually harassed her. Was it after this conversation that she called you? Or yes, before it, was, this? It, was, it was after this conversation. It was after this conversation that she called me. Yeah. So at this point that I saw her and asked her that she, um, she can write the letter. So I went back to the class to, to look for her and tell her I didn't see her again. And he said, ah, she has left that. Immediately I left, she left, that she doesn't wait. That's what a colleague said. Right. So I said, okay, no problem. And that's why I sent the other message to her again, that I've seen Mama Kale. She said it's possible that you should write the letter. letter. And this is it. At that point, nothing transpired and nothing more. Every morning I send a, a motivational messages, which uh, uh, on every of my contacts, it yeah, appeared on her contact too. After the messages, and after that day, she didn't reach out to you whatsoever. She didn't reach out to, to me. To remind you of the deal. Of the deal. She didn't re re send any message. But the next day, which was a Saturday, the 14th of December, because I didn't see her roommate again. She's in part-time. So the next day, which was Saturday the 14th, I saw a roommate in class, in the part-time class, when I came to take the class. So after I finished, I called her. I said, I told you I wanted to see you yesterday. I didn't see you again. And I said, you should follow me. She, we sat in the office. At least if it's a roommate, if any of such has happened, who she claimed a roommate she probably was have, she, probably she, have explained. she would have explained to me that what you did to my roommate or my friend yesterday was not good. was not good that she narrated everything because nothing of that happened she didn't tell me okay so when the lady um suggested sex i'm um, yes, taking you up on that again yes, um, was there any kind of tussle maybe she tried to jump at you did she stand up did she try to was she sitting or was she standing what was the sitting position between the both of i was sitting on the other end and she was sitting on the opposite, there was quite a distance. There was this, and uh, there was a table in between. Right. right. There was a table in between. Right. So uh, when when she said that, I I told her nothing of such. So she just said it where she sat. Where she sat. She didn't stand up. She didn't she, advance towards. She didn't me. advance towards me. So I told her nothing of such. But don't worry, it will be fine. I trust mm -hmm. Mama Kale. She you stood up to pat her. Yes. Well, I just stood up and patted her. That don't worry, it will be fine. Mama Kale will take care of the whole thing. And that was it. She left the office. So have you, have you talked to her since this incident um, became public? Have you spoken with her? What has she said about this whole thing? Have you, have you had any conversation with her? I've not had conversation with her. The only time I met her was after Mama Khaled called me and said she, the lady has written to the school and a panel will be set up and I'll be invited. I said, okay, no problem. The HOD General Studies, Mr. Boyola, informed me on the last day of school that have I heard about the allegation against me? I said, yes, sir. He said the panel has been set up to meet on the 6th of January. That's the first day of resumption of school, 2020, mm -hmm. that by 10 a.m. I should make myself available. I said, okay, sir, no problem. So when it was time, I went to meet them and they asked me questions of what happened, and I narrated everything mm -hmm. I've narrated so that I won't take time. Yes. So I narrated everything that happened, and they said, the lady said she signed all the attendance, and I gave them the attendance. They have the original copy of the attendance. Yes. With, they have the original, this is the photocopy. So I gave them, and they looked at it, and they said she didn't sign everything. That is there any other attendance? I brought out the old one. That this is the old one which they transferred from. This is the original copy. That this is the old one they transferred from. And this is it. And he said, okay, if that be the case, if that be the case, well, all well and good. And 
at that point, they said they will get back to me. At, at the panel, I didn't even remember the, the WhatsApp message. I didn't remember the first day I went to the panel. And after telling them what, what happened, they said, okay, I can go. They invited her in. She narrated her own. I wasn't there, so I don't know what she, she said. So later, I went back to them that, can I go? They said, I can go for now. That further, further investigation is still on, and they will get back to me in due time. So at that point, on the 17th of January was the other time they called us again. And when they called me, they said, they said, they for, that, on the 17th, they said, they called me first and they asked some questions. And they said, there was a WhatsApp message, which I didn't tender as evidence. I said, well, I didn't even remember. I said, WhatsApp message. They said, yes, that she brought a WhatsApp message. And I said, she, they showed me from her phone. And I said, okay, can you please excuse me? Let me bring my, my phone so that I went to the office, quickly went to the office. I brought my phone. They compared it to the same thing. So then I said, okay, at this point, they are going to call both parties, parties. together. And they said, they don't want fight, they don't want abusive word, they don't want us to, that it's going to be a cross examination. I said, no problem, I'm okay with that. And I left. Before then, they t she, she came in first, they told her to call me. She started sh shouting and abusing that she cannot do that. And so I came in, the HOD came to call me by himself. I came in and he narrated what happened to me. Um, what just transpired That's to fine. me. I said, they, they are going to call both parties together. I said, okay, no problem. And when they called the two of us together, we got um, to, to the panelist front, which was two female and a male, Mrs. Odum, Mrs. Maureen Bobola, and Mr. Boye Ola. And they asked her, we saw a WhatsApp message on your phone that both of you were conversing. And she said, no, 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 no. That it was one-sided conversation. That I was the one doing the conversation. She wasn't replying. They brought her phone and said, but this is your reply to these messages. He said, I've, I've, I've seen the first step and they said it's possible. And you said, okay, uh, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, that you replied at that point, she could not say anything again. She calmed down. She kept quiet because she was shouting seriously on top of her voice and uh, trying to insult the panel and myself. So they now told her that oh, it's okay. At this point, can you just tell, narrate what happened on the 13th of yeah. December? She started shouting again that she cannot narrate, that they should tell me to start first. This, that, ah. Uh, and the panel told her that if at all we are not your parents, we are old enough at least to be a parent. And we are your lecturers. We can still at least talk to you and you should just take it easy. And she started shouting and said she cannot, she cannot, that they should tell me to, to, to narrate what happened. And I raised my hand and said, please, to save time, can you please allow me narrate what happened and he said okay if you want to start start and i narrated everything that happened and when i got to the point of she offered me sex she started shouting and shouting on top of her voice and before we knew she started crying mrs Popo last stood up from where she was went to her and patted her trying to calm her down that calm down calm down at least both of you are here now. We will know who is telling the truth and who is not telling the truth. Now just take your time, calm down. If you have your, your evidences and you have everything, let, this is the time for us mm. to know everything that transpired. As she was saying that the next thing we saw, she stood up and she ran out of the panel. Few hours later, we saw the story on the social media. 
When you said that story, how did you feel? I felt bad. I felt bad because one, my name is at, at stake. Okay, have there been low key cases of sexual harassment in NIJ? Have you heard of maybe low key cases of sexual harassment in the school? Maybe you heard of some prior to this time that were not blown out of proportion. Maybe people were trying because we've seen people have written that we've had a lot of people talk about sexual about harassment in the school, but they've always tried to suppress so it. Have you heard of such? Well, um, I'm a part time student, I'm not that. Lecturer. Uh, uh, sorry, lecturer. I'm, I'm not that uh, or that frequent on the on the institution ground. So it, it 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 may be happening, and I don't know. I have not heard of such before. Yeah. All right. So do you have any other thing you want to say, maybe on this issue, like going forward? Uh, yeah. What I want to say is about the judgment of, of the school. That the judgment is not the right judgment is against humanity because if you look at it you said you didn't find me guilty and um, you are you are relieving me of my of my of my job it means that you are indicting me indirectly that is the meaning and now they're trying to save the name of the school and at, at the expense of my own name and look at the girl the girl went on 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 um, on social media again to grant interview and said she's leaving the school and this is a girl that they're, they're trying to you know trying to uh, save so as to have their good uh, their good name if you look at it from the first day the, the panel was constituted and you walked out of the panel mm. you walked out of the panel that was and you went on social media which is against uh, 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 the school authority is a slap on the school authority. Is a slap on the school itself because a panel w w was constituted to look into the case. It's not that they kept quiet. Thank you very much, Mr. Tenebo. Let me ask this final question: Would you be willing to return to NIJ if they perhaps called you back? I've always loved teaching, and I've dedicated years of service there. It's one passion that I have, and that's it. I wouldn't mind. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, that's a wrap for us on this interview with Mr. Tene John, a now former lecturer of Nigeria History of Journalism, who was recently dismissed for over allegations of sexual harassment. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs>